What is up guys? Welcome back to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. I'm Wade Lumsden and today we are getting started on uh, this uh, hobby stock slash modified temporary motor. Uh, <laughs> you see we got it up on the stand. Um, we got pistons starting to get cleaned up so uh, let's get to work. guys so I'm gonna start off uh, this process by cleaning up the pistons that we got um, decided that this thing is gonna be the flat top motor um, they've been sitting oily and dirty for a long time they didn't get cleaned up and wrapped up like I will normally like to do them um, so as you can see there's lots of nastiness on them um, what I'm starting off doing is just getting the bulk of everything wiped off here on all of them and then uh, with a little bit of you know brake clean and some rags and just yeah getting everything that I can off and then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, inspect all of the pistons uh, and end up taking all of the rings and stuff off that way we can um, get in there and clean those areas as well and um, while we you know we go through the inspection process I'll show you how I inspect at least at least one of these things and then I have a tub sitting here um, this will be hot soapy water um, soon uh, yeah soon uh, <laughs> and uh, then these will all go into the tub of hot soapy water and uh, we'll start getting all that stuff cleaned up uh, and they might have to soak overnight they you know it depends on how clean they're coming uh, but once they get all cleaned up and ready to go man we're we're really close to um, starting that assembly stuff so uh, block is up on the stand thank goodness that's a great start so yep let's start with uh, cleaning up pistons like I said uh, just gonna start with the oil getting the bulk of everything off and then uh, we'll start taking rings and stuff off and really looking at it and inspect the piston and I'll show you guys how I inspect the piston especially something that's been used already right uh, a piston and rod assembly that's that's together and uh, we'll go from there let me get these other ones wiped up and uh, then we'll get into the uh, inspection part Alrighty, so I got most of these cleaned up uh, for the most part. So um, here you go. We got we got our piston here. Again, we're still just wiping as much junk off of it as we can. Um, and we're going to start the inspection of the piston and the rod. Um, first thing I like to do, of course, is just look over the whole thing and see if the whole piston see if I can find any cracks usually if there's going to be any cracks uh, in the wrist pin area they're like right here usually uh, but you know any cracks or holes or chunks missing or any of that stuff around the skirt um, sometimes um, the skirt will chunk apart and that's that's no bueno so uh, make sure you're inspecting the whole thing for cracks all along in this area wrist pin area underneath the top um, we're gonna end up looking at it some more once it's cleaned up but this is just the preliminary if there's something major <clears throat> and we find it before we go through the hassle of cleaning everything off that's great right um, and then I always want to make sure that you know this is moving nice and free uh, and it's nice and clean and then I like to give it some some twists this way um, like going back and forth this way make sure there's nothing you know major for play there um, if you are using this this one's a floating rod right meaning that uh, this rod is floating and literally moving 
on the wrist pin right there. Uh, some are pressed on, meaning that um, it, there's a tight interference between the wrist pin and the rod. And when you move it back and forth, you'd actually see the wrist pin moving back and forth in here. And it just uh, kind of sits in there. So floating, it floats on the wrist pin, press fit, it press fits on the pin, but then the pin floats inside the piston, right? So you want to make sure that there's no major amounts of play, right? We're also looking at the rod for any major damage uh, or anything like that, especially any bluing in this area um, or even up, up in this area. Uh, this one's looking pretty good. Um, one of the next things we're going to do is we're going to pull off the, the rings here. Um, I usually just pull them off by hand like that. And then what I like to do is take the ring, granted this is the old ring, before when we put go to put the new rings on, we'll also check it with the new rings, but um, I then check to make sure, you know, that there's no hang up, no um, issues uh, with this compression ring up here, right? Because usually this is where the damage would be. The other thing you're looking for is to make sure there's not excess play um, in this direction right with it anywhere and uh, this one feels really good so uh, you're also going to do that same thing on the next ring um, usually that one's fine um, if that one's if the second one down is damaged usually the top one's uh, damaged as well <laughs> usually I haven't seen them damaged separately before uh, so Again, I'm just checking real quick. Um, and again, we'll check all this when the piston's actually like really clean. Uh, this is just the preliminary check. That way, if we find something major, we can go ahead and stop and uh, move on with our lives, right? Versus wasting a whole bunch more time prepping a piston that's bad. <laughs> okay, I'm looking for, there it is. Get the other ring off. There we go. The oil ring, I, I pretty much just visually inspect. Um, that one, you don't really need to run anything through it or anything. Right? So, make sure you're looking, especially if you're doing like a uh, a freshen up where you're pulling apart something that's been run for a long time uh, you know check check all that stuff out uh, one of the other things we're gonna check here is we're gonna pull the rod bearings out so I'm gonna unscrew it this rod cap should come off fairly easy right like I should be able to yeah see um, if you're gonna have to shove a hammer in there and pull it out to you know spread it you, you might have some issues um, and that's that's no good so uh, one of the things I I like to check on used stuff um, is the stretch on your rod bolts um, so I get my calipers out and I zero them and then I measure these up from tip to tail, right? 2.121, 2. let me get it on there, 2.125. So, um, what you're doing is you're checking for stretch in these bolts if they're super stretched out um, you're gonna want to replace them uh, go get you some ARPs or, or like replacements right some aftermarket stuff um, to replace those because you don't want to use stretched out bolts <laughs> um, one of the other things we're gonna look at is we're gonna both sides here I'll clean this up and I'll probably use the cap side here Roll the bearing out, wipe it out, 
see if I can make it to where you guys can see what I'm about to talk about here. So what you're going to be looking for uh, is make sure that there's no bluing in here um, as if the bearing, uh, right, because this is the bearing and the bearing locks in on these tines on both sides. That's what keeps the, the bearing from spinning and keeps it stationary inside its spot. When people say they spun a bearing, that means that it it pushed past these little tangs and it literally, you know, when you put it together and you would pull it apart, it'd be spun like this. And then this is spinning inside here, creating a bunch of heat and friction. This does not get oil. This spot right here does not get oil. The bearing inside of the bearing gets oil. This does not. So this will get hot and blew up and blue not like blow up but blue b-l-u-e the color um and that's that's spinning a bearing and you'll want to you'll you'll want to replace your rods um at that point but if you're tearing something down and putting it back together uh something good to look for um a, a good way to know that your cap and your rod and stuff is good is in here i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it but when rods are made, um, they're actually honed a little bit. Just like in a cylinder, they get honed. So you should be able to look and still see remnants of the cross hatching on the cap and the rod. Um, this has them, so that's good. <laughs> we're, we're happy with that. So we'll put this back together. If you're lucky enough that whoever made your rods or whatever uh, marks them with a number, the numbers usually go together. But on the other side of that, um, you have the tang for the bearing here, tang for the bearing there. They match up, they go together. As long as you don't cockeye it, <laughs> it'll go together pretty quick. And then I'm gonna screw this together. So those are a bunch of things to look for. Um, when you're inspecting your stuff, again, I just a quick inspection um, before they're clean. That way, you know, not wasting time if something major pops up. But I'm not seeing anything on these. They do need to get cleaned up, cleaned up, and then we will really uh, get a good look at them again. Um, you know, look down in here as much as we can, see if there's any cracking or anything like that. Um, but you know, it floats the way it should. There's no looseness like there shouldn't be. Um, the rings fit in their, their spots on the piston just right. Um, no cracks. Uh, this came apart just fine. The cross hatching is still relatively there. And the rod bolts are not stretched. So um, good things to look at when you get started. Um, and you start, you know, putting something together, especially when you're using used stuff, right? So let me rotate you guys over here a little bit. So um, now I have my pistons all cleaned up. I'm gonna have to stack these in here um, nice and easy. Uh, I got as much oil and stuff off them as I could. What we're going to do now is give them a nice warm bath. Wonder th wonderful thing about oil and water is they don't mix. Um, and the water, uh, with the water in there, all the oils go to the top. Hopefully it takes the grime with it. So uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, soak these in some uh, warm soapy water for a little while. And then we'll come back and we'll scrub and clean as much as we possibly can um, to make sure that the pistons are good to go. Victory is ours at that point. So uh, no big deal. This is again, um, just to get us started, right? Uh, this might take one or two days to make sure that we get everything clean. Cause the other thing we're gonna go after is uh, we're gonna try to get as much carbon and stuff off here as possible because that makes it to where we can't see the top of the piston and inspect the top of the piston. So um, don't get super crazy with abrasive uh, material. 
uh, when you're, you know, don't don't take like a frick, uh, flapper wheel or something to this, you know. Um, you can get away with a wall, uh, excuse me, Scotch Brite pad or um, something like that. Something a little bit coarse, but you don't want to get like super crazy and be grinding on this. Um, that's just, I don't know. You damage the face of the piston. Granted, there are guys that, um, you know, they'll duct tape all the way around here and then they will bead blast or sand, it's bead blast, right? Yeah, I think it's bead blasting, not sand blasting. Um, the face of that, so that it makes the whole face of your piston look like a golf ball um, and it takes away any rough, rough edges and um, sharp points and things like that which would create hot spots which could cause detonation and stuff inside your engine um, but it's supposed to help control um, your flame travel and all that happy stuff too but that's more uh, like high dollar race car stuff um, this is a high hobby stock motor guys uh, <laughs> um, hobby stocks really the, hobby it's a hobby right so you're supposed to be able to use stock parts or things that were found in stock engines um, put a slightly bigger cam way back in the day they used to always use um, like a motorhome cam and, and and put this thing together and have just a little bit more performance because you made the right combination out of the right stock parts and and voila you got something that that runs nice and strong um, but it wasn't super crazy. So, and that's basically what this hobby stock motor builds about. So, um, not exactly a junkyard build, like I said in another video, but in a way kind of is cause we're using, you know, this is, this is use, used stuff. Granite, um, we're not going to be using a whole lot of other used stuff, but the premise would basically be the same, um, with all your other parts. You want to inspect it real well, clean it real well. Uh, to be able to use it. So, now that we got our pistons basically um, sitting in their spa, uh, we are uh, going to, you know, come out here after a little while and clean up what we can and then let them, probably let them soak some more. Um, lots of guys will just use soapy water. Some guys will soak it in degreaser. Some guys will soak it in, um, you know, whatever it takes to clean, um, clean their pistons, just whatever you use, don't use. Uh, these are a flat top forged aluminum piston. So um, don't use anything that's going to eat your, uh, <laughs> you know, your rod or, or your piston <laughs> don't do that <laughs> you would be a very unhappy camper so uh all right so this build is going to come at you in uh, a handful of videos uh kind of a kind of a step-by-step -step, but not really a step-by-step -step. um there's just some things i'd like to point out to you guys that are uh putting motors together you know, um, I think there's a difference between a engine builder and a engine assembler. Um, and part of that is uh, an engine builder takes, takes a lot of extra time to measure things, make sure things are clearanced and clean and um, should be working the way that they are working, whether they're using used parts or new parts. So. Um, I by no means consider myself an engine builder. Um, I consider myself a decent engine assembler. Uh, <laughs> so um, those guys that that build engines and build engines, you know, they're gonna just this process alone, making sure stuff is clean and everything's good between the piston and the rod itself. They're they're gonna spend a good amount of time, probably a whole night out in the garage, uh, just inspecting and making sure that all those things are exactly how they want it. Um, and there's going to be a lot of other things, um, like that, uh, as you go to put the, the engine together that an engine builder would take all that time and do all that. Um, I just try to be conscious of all those things and, uh, and do my best. So, with that being said, 
Thanks for watching guys. Any questions, comments, concerns down below. If there's anything you'd like uh, highlighted throughout the build, please make sure um, you, uh, you comment and, and ask those questions. Um, I'll either address them in another video or uh, try to answer those questions down in the comments. I do read all the comments. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to go to the Lumsden Motorsports Facebook page. We still got t-shirts. Reach out to me on the Facebook page um, if you want a t-shirt. We'll get that figured out. And we'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, I just want to uh, clarify something about uh, rod bolt stretch um, before a whole bunch of uh, keyboard wires uh, jump on and, and start getting crazy. Okay. Um, my approach with this build was, you know, I'm using used stuff here. So when I'm measuring the rod bolt uh, length, I'm really, I'm just making sure that they're all within the same ballpark of each other. Um, really, technically, I guess what a good, since we talked about engine builders, what a good engine builder would know is what the length of that uh, bolt was before it ever got torqued down right and then you torque it down and it stretches it you know if if it was 1.600 zero, zero, um, you torque it down now it's 1.605 or whatever I'm just throwing numbers out right um, and then you unbolt everything because you're stretching you're stretching that bolt just a little bit to get that um, get that torque um, if you and then you unbolt everything if when you unbolt everything you get 1.601 with nothing on it um, that means that bolt has been stretched and that's been permanently stretched uh, I think if you read some ARP uh, literature it says uh, that if that happens you get that one thousandth of an inch stretch um, that bolts no good anymore right so uh, you guys doing major race applications um, get yourself a good set of aftermarket bolts if you're the one doing the build measure that stuff write it in your book um, make notes of everything that, that you're assembling and the measurements and all that stuff um, that way when you go to do a refresh or whatever you have that measurement so um, in my case mild build right I was just making sure nothing was wildly out of whack um, odds are really good that this that these have you know a thousandth of an inch permanent stretch on them um, but honestly I, I've put together bunches and bunches of motors that uh, we just have reused reuse those bolts and everything's been fine never had a motor come apart because of that um, as long as we're keeping an eye out for something that's not completely way out of whack right like you go to torque torque the bolt down and it just you know you can never get the torque that you want because the bolt just keeps stretching that's obviously because it's a weak bolt um, so I, I think if they're all relatively in the same ballpark with each other, you know, within, uh, in my head, within a couple thousandths because it's, you got error, right? You measuring it on a bolt. Um, <laughs> I was measuring pistons that I had wiped off clean, right? But they may not have been perfectly clean, so there might have been some grit in that measurement. Um, and when you're talking thousandths of an inch, you're talking really small, right? So uh, the, the little bit of oil that was left on there, oil film, could make a difference, right? So I, I just wanted to clarify that before things got crazy. Um, race motor, of course, you know, make sure you know what the length of that bolt was before. That way you can measure it after. And like I said, I think ARP says that if it's stretched permanently stretched again you know after you take it all apart um, by one thousandth of an inch um, it's no good anymore and replace it right so take that with a grain of salt um, again this is what I'm doing for my engine build 
Um, I've done this a lot in the past and it I haven't had something come apart on me um, for for a hobby stock or anything like that. I mean, even I, I've built some 383s that, you know, we rev up to 7,800 RPM and race up there uh, and, and it's been fine. So uh, again, take my advice with a uh, grain of salt, but um, if you wanna be safe, just get the new bolts and put them together, right? Um, I'm kind of in a spot in my situation where I can't wait um, any longer to get that kind of stuff. I'm in a hurry to do the build um, and get it in the car and get it running and there's supply shortages everywhere. So I'm making do with the best that I have and just making sure that nothing is crazy wonky and out of whack. So. Um, yeah, please, <laughs> you know, if you got good advice, um, down below, put it down below, you know, um, for myself to read and for anybody else who watches this video, uh, go down into the comment section. If you got good advice, things that you do do better or, um, that you suggest, I mean, please do add that down below. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I understand the concept of bolt stretch uh, <laughs> and and in a perfect world what I probably should be doing but what I've done in the past and what I'm currently doing has worked for me before so um, with all that being said thanks guys <laughs> um, and again questions comments concerns down below thanks for watching guys we'll see you next video